In this video, we'll cover the basics of working with Teams and using version control in Rapid Harness. So let's get started by talking about Teams and showing how to get your team using Rapid Harness. The benefit of working in the same team is that you can share and collaborate all of your designs within your company. So not only can everyone see and edit your harnessing schematics, but as you start to add other parts to your own library, like custom cables or templates, this work only has to be done once and then it can be shared with the rest of your team. So let's assume that you've already created an account and logged into Rapid Harness and show how to edit your profile and manage your company. So to get to this part of the app, I'm going to click the back button here and then in the main screen I can go to the account section in the ribbon. And here I can see I can manage my profile, manage my company, and sign out. And the first option here is manage profile. And when I click this you can see that you can update your name or change your password. Um, and I'm not going to do either of those for the moment. But the one thing to mention here is that if you forget your password, the best place to reset it is through the login dialog. So to get there, what I'll do is close this, and then I'll press sign out. And back in this login dialog here, um, you can reset your password with the forgot password button down at the bottom. And this will walk you through with the different instructions to reset your password. But let's go ahead and log back in. And the last section here is managing your company. And when we press this, we can see our company name, as well as a list of users below. And again, I could click in here and change the name and then press Save Changes, uh, but I'm going to skip that as well. In our list of users below, we can see people's names, their email addresses, and whether or not they're an administrator, which we'll talk about in a second here. Um, but if you want to add more people to your team, what you can do is press the Invite More Users button. And in here, all you need to do is type some email addresses, and I have some already that I'm just going to paste in. So in this case, we're going to invite John and Jane at Rapid Harness. And when we press Invite Users, uh, we'll send them an email that will have instructions for how to download and install Rapid Harness, along with a unique invitation code they can use to sign in. So let's press this for example. And I won't show the email, but we can see in our list of users, uh, two additional rows are now here for Jane and John. And right now, both of them say invitation sent. Once they log in and create their account, then this will say their full name here as well. So looking back at this list for a second, let's talk about the administrator column. To give someone administrative privileges means that this person can change the company name, they can delete users and delete invitations, as well as mark other people as administrators. And if you forget what these things are, if you hover over this help icon, then you'll see some details on this. And the last thing to mention is deleting users. So when I select a user here, we can see this delete button appears in the far right. And one thing to mention about deleting is all of the historical work will always be preserved and still available. So in this case, even if I were to delete Amy, uh, we would still see any harnesses or any other things she had designed or worked on, and it will always be there as part of the version control system, uh, and it will also always be under her own name. So I don't have to worry about losing any information or anything else like that. The one trick to this is if she's working on any current designs right now, but hasn't versioned them yet, then those designs will be transferred over to the person deleting the account. So for this case, all of the work that she hasn't versioned and shared with the team will be transferred over to me, and I could make the decision whether or not to save this work or version it or continue working on it. And the last thing here is just like deleting users, if I wanted to delete one of these uh, invitations at the bottom, say for instance I had mistyped John here, uh, what I could do is just press the delete button here, and this will remove his invitation and John will no longer be able to create an account. But that covers the basics of managing your company, so let's take a moment and talk about version control. And let's look at it from the open window as well. So version control in Rapid Harness is used so you and your company can share all your designs and keep a complete historical record of all of your work. And the version control is built into Rapid Harness, which means all of your data is stored privately in the cloud by our team and we can manage things like security, backups, and updates for you automatically. And this means that you can try out the software immediately, 
and you don't have to have your own IT department to set up or maintain any databases or APIs. And the last cool thing about this is that this means that we can have everyone running the latest version of the software. So this being said, let's look at an overview of how the mechanics of version control works, and I want to do this through the help screen. So I'm just going to press F1 here to open up help, and then I'll go to version control here, and then I just want to scroll down to uh, this diagram here. So what this diagram shows is that there are two basic states of any design. And by design, I mean a wire or cable or harness, drawing template or any other type that you can create in the software. So these two states are an editable copy or a version copy. And at a high level, an editable copy is one that you can work on and change. And when you're doing this work, it's private to the person that created it. So when we create a new harness or a new wire, uh, the creator is the only one that can see it. No one else in your company can see it yet. And the last thing is that, of course, the creator can view and edit the design as well as use it in their other designs. So as soon as you create a wire, you can immediately use it in a harness or any other design that you want. And once you're done editing your design, say, for instance, you're releasing your harness to manufacturing, uh, what you can do is create a version of it, um, and that creates a version copy. And version copies are immutable, which means they're read-only. They also have a version name, so that's something that you're going to type in and specify. They're also shared with your entire company, and they can be used in other designs. So anyone else on your team can use version copies of designs in any of their other designs. And the last thing is that with a version copy, even though it's read-only, you can always edit it to make a new editable copy, and that's what this green arrow here shows. So you can edit and then create a version and then edit it again and create another version and so on and so forth. So let's show all this in a basic example. And what I want to do is create a new wire. So let me click new here and create a new wire. And I'll give this a wire a name. So we'll just call it uh, wire123 to keep it simple. And for the description, let's call it uh, version control demo. And then let me give it a gauge and give it a color. Let's call this pink. And at this point, let me just go ahead and save our design. And saving just means that it was saved to the server so I could close the app right now and then open it up again later to continue working on it. But it isn't shared with the rest of our team. It hasn't been versioned yet. So I could take this wire and since it's still an editable copy, I could use it in a harness of my own but if I want someone else on my team to be able to use this, then what I need to do is create a version here. So let's go ahead and do that just to show it. And we can see when we press this button, we are prompted to give a version name, which we can type out here. And for this case, let's just call this initial release. And then we'll go ahead and click create version. And now we can see a couple of things have changed. Uh, first of all, there's a yellow banner across the top of this design, and it says this version is read-only. Uh, we can edit this design. And on the far right, we can see the version name, which is initial release, which we just typed out, as well as the uh, date and time it was created and who it was created by. And the last thing to note here is this entire document is read-only. I can no longer modify any of the properties of this wire. So now if we wanted to take this version copy and edit it, what we do is create another editable copy. And to do that, all we need to do is press edit right here, or we can do it up at the top. And I'll press this. And we can see we have a new tab here for our editable copy. And back in our prior tab, this is still pointing to the read-only one that we have in our version control system. Um, this one is the newer version of it. So in this case, let's go ahead and just make a couple changes. Uh, so let's just change the color here to red, and then we can create another version of it here. And for the name, I'm just going to call it updated to red. And I'll click create version. And again, we can see this is now a version copy that we can no longer edit. So with this wire, I want to show it in two more places. And the first one is in the open screen. So let's go ahead and look at it, and I could either search for it in the open menu up here, or I can just click the view history button up top here, so let me do that one. 
And this is showing us our wire in the open screen. And here's our wire that we typed out with our part number and description. And with this wire, we've seen this before, I can click on it and when it's clicked on, I can um, open it here as well as do things like clone it to a new design or delete the design. And in addition, if we look at the far right, we can see some more details about this wire. So over here, for instance, we can see who's currently editing it, which right now is nobody, as well as at the bottom, we can see the version history. And this is where we can see the complete history of this design. So in this case, we had one version copy called initial release, and here's the date and time and the author. And here's the latest version um, that we just made as well. So we can see two minutes later, we made the new version of our wire. And with these versions, if I click on them, I can again choose more options with them. So I can open a specific version of them, or I can also do things like cloning at this version to a new design, or deleting just this specific version of this design. So let's go ahead and open this latest one again. So I'm gonna open the updated to red version, which I could do here, or it does it by default. Um, up in here, when I click open, this will open our latest version. So let me do this. And this takes us back to where we were before. And let's go ahead and edit just to show what that looks like. And let's go back to our history here. And now we can see when we select this wire, uh, this is what it looks like when there's an editable copy. And in this case, I'm the one that's working on it, but the editable copy could be anyone else in your team. So that shows you the basics of creating, editing, and versioning your designs. The last thing I wanna show is how this wire looks when we use it in a harness. And I have a sample harness in mind, so let me go ahead and open that one up here. So here's our harness, and what I wanna show is assigning that wire we created to some of our connections. So let's go over to our connections here, and let's just assign it to the last one here to be simple. So I'm going to uh, insert a wire here. And here we can see our wire we just created. And what I can do is double click on it or press the add wire button, which will add the latest version of the wire available. Or if I hit this drop down, I can choose to select a specific version of this wire. So let's do that real quickly. And in here we can see the history of this design. So let's go ahead and choose the initial release here, the one when it was pink. And we'll add this wire. And then let's edit this last connection uh, to use our new wire we just added. We can save that. So as expected, our wire here is pink. Uh, but what's really cool about this is if we go back to our design assembly and look at this wire, here we can see the part number of our wire, but then we also have this little arrow to the right, which says there's a newer version available. And when I right click in the assembly, I could change my design and pick a newer version of that design, or I could just select the second option here to update the design to the latest version. And that will pick the latest version of the design available. So let's do that. And now we can see that arrow disappeared. And if we go back over to our connections tab, we can see now it's pointing to the red wire here and all of our drawings are automatically updated, including things like our wiring table as well. So here we can see uh, wire five at the end here and it's showing the red color. And the last thing to point out is if we look back at our assembly, there are a couple other designs that also have newer versions available and I could go through these one by one and pick their versions. Or if I go up to the home screen, what I can do is click update all designs in the tools menu. And when I do this, we can see everything is updated to the latest version and all of our connections and connectors are brought up to the latest version of everything. And this will work if you're updating wires and cables within harnesses or more complex things like updating harnesses within systems. And hopefully that gives you an idea of how to work with teams and to use version control in RapidHarness.